I mean, he said the most important thing was the boy who created whose eyes are those eyes. And that boy was Takami Shan all along. Oh no, Frig! We created the end of the world? But it was an experiment that ran different to how he had hypothesized. What? Why the quotation marks? That's gotta be Takami, dude. It looks like him, dude. It's gotta be Takami. And when I looked, the house I knew. Oh no. Oh, it's not gonna be there. How's it going, everybody? Hoodlamut here, back with some more Chaos Head Noah. Oh my goodness gracious, guys. Oh, crap just hit the fan for real this time. Like, I was saying that forever ago, but now it actually, now we're getting somewhere. We're maybe in amnesia. Well, let's, let's back up. Let's hold on. Let's just freaking... So, Bon had a cute little daddy-daughter-esque type relationship thing going on with, with Yua taking her to the... Well, she took him to the, the Ghetto Froggy uh, store so he could check it out and see what the hullabaloo is about all that. Um, and then, after that, we went to... Uh, Takumi, who was walked home by Dini, and during that time, freaking Senna jumped out and tried to surprise attack in a way that wasn't really much of a surprise attack, but tried to kill Takumi because he came up with the formula IR2, which we still don't fully know what that means, but we're starting to assume that maybe my theory is that he created God... That he created the, the, the being that they had to stop. And uh, anyway, Demi proved that she was a gigalomaniac by whipping out her D-sword, which is like two chakram-type blades, and um, tried to prevent Senna from killing us, and uh, only was able to do so by giving Senna a delusion of what seemed to be her dad, uh, which is the guy that was the homeless guy that Orihara ran into, and uh, that guy looks very much like Takami, which is leading me to think that Takami is, in the future, Senna's dad. Uh, and uh, his, he, he had to kill his wife in order to, I guess, stave off this creature that he created with this formula, is, is what I'm understanding. Um, and uh, aside from that... We also learned, according to Dimi, who was t telling Senna to stop yelling at us because we apparently don't remember anything, which leads us to believe that we have amnesia to some degree, and I have no clue what the heck else that could mean other than that, and that's that's where we're at now. Now we're, now we're back in uh, the Nozomi HQ, it seems, and we're going to hear some more bullcrap from the big baddies, so uh, without any further ado... Oh, let's just get back into this, shall we? What stands above all else within Noah 2 is a particular formula incorporated into the core system. Its solution has remained unknown throughout human history, even to this very day. One of the seven Millennium Prize problems, yes? Ah, I know of these. The seven still unsolved problems within the realm of mathematics, each with a million dollar prize. I'm afraid you are incorrect. It is not among those seven. You see, in truth, there was a time when the Millennium Prize problems contained eight problems. One was expunged before the rest were made public, which is how it has remained even as we stand here today. The equation incorporated into Noah 2, I take it? And the reasoning behind its expungement? The possibility within to shower the world in calamity, most notably. Just what manner of formula is this? It is a resonance phenomenon which speculates on electromagnetic forces within the fundamental interactions. That is what the formula conveys. In turn, it has elucidated an unknown force, one which manifests 
through local interaction between established electromagnetic pulses and receptors. Through this one formula, the accumulated research and development on silent weapons, all the efforts of every nation over the past 30 years, would become obsolete in a mere instant. Whoever finds the solution to that question, why, they would be akin to God himself. Oh boy. Yup. So, so apparently, older Takumi sent younger Takumi in dream form this, this equation and apparently the resolution of it, which is IR2. And apparently IR2, it, like I'm thinking created God, so that must be what he's talking about. It's like, would make him akin to God. Oh boy. Is that what you have accomplished then? It was found in a most mysterious place. The scribblings of a child, if you can believe such a thing. <gasps> they got his scribblings, dude! What? That means, wait, I bet that paper that we got, right? Because it came out of nowhere, right? He just happened to see it on the bed. That was a delusion I bet Shogun gave us, because Shogun's still helping us. So I bet Shogun sent us that, because he wants us to try and wake up. But but see, then... then but Demi's still working with Shogun, and she wants him to stay asleep. She said you can't awaken him. So, I don't know. I don't understand anything, man. I just, I, I can't figure this out. But, but if that's the case, then they must have the real scribblings. Shogun sent a delusion of a replica of the scribblings to Takami to hopefully help wake him up out of this. So, so it's like it's like Shogun and Demi are on opposite but the same sides at the same time. How is that possible? I don't get it. IR2. With this formula, the hardware of Noah 2 has obtained the ability to rival God himself. All that remains is to gather code samples of gigalomaniacs for usage with the software. With the full-scale operation of Noah 2, all that we desire will be made real. Oh, how I wish Einstein were alive today. I hear he was a gigalomaniac of tremendous power. Yeah, okay. So anyone who was insanely intelligent, like, they're calling gigalomaniacs interesting, okay. Rather than speculation, how fares the current situation? Is it not said that the world's number of gigalomaniacs is few? How can we hope to succeed under such circumstances? The sample of five people have already been secured. An adequate number for the operation of Noah II, it seems. Splendid, indeed. However, with each and every additional sample, the abilities of Noah II will rise. And in particular, there is a gigalomaniac boy whose sample I have much interest in harvesting, no matter what the cost may be. Oh boy. Okay. So why they need samples, though, to make this bad boy work, huh? Okay. Be that as it may, any delays that face our project will not be tolerated. What milestone do you believe shall mark Noah II entering full-scale operation? The final experiment prior to operation. The third melt, carried out by myself. Do you plan to induce another earthquake? What of its estimated scale? It is anticipated to be on the same level as the Great Kanto Earthquake. The Great Kanto Earthquake? Did that not have a magnitude of 7.9? With modern-day building code and seismic isolation levels in mind, the city will sustain nowhere near as much damage as it once would. But the number of casualties will certainly dwarf that of the first two, will it not? If in line with our estimates, it will total approximately 5,000 people. Although I must say, that estimate is optimistic. Are there any questions? 
I expect you'll be taking responsibility for this folly. Shall I carve out my stomach and perish before your very eyes? <laughs> this is the final experiment. When the time comes, and the third melt has produced the results we seek, Noah too will see perfect completion. The world's possibilities will then be in our hands. Gosh dang, alright, it sounds like we're maybe in the final stretch then. Frick. The moment you created that formula, the world diverged. Diverged? What, like with routes? This wasn't in it, okay? Taku. Let's just go. There's no point listening to this. Themi pulled on my hand, pleading me to go inside my room. Her demeanor oozed feelings of desperation. Themi was afraid of something. What is she afraid of us learning? She's afraid of us learning the truth because she thinks it will make everything worse when we awaken? Oh boy. He must have had the formula be that, that like, so whatever older Takami's wife's sacrifice included, it must have made it so that, so that he, he, uh, like, would go into a form of amnesia and, <gasps> dude, what if, okay, Dimi seems to kind of like him and she said he'd she'd always stay by his side. What if Dimi's his wife in the future and she sacrificed herself, but, but he, she like created, created a delusion of herself that would always stay by his side in his amnesia uh, state that he's in when he's younger. So that way he would never awaken again. So she's always there to prevent him from waking up to the truth. So that the, cat the catastrophe will never happen. Yo, what if that's how it... Because she had to die in order for herself to maybe become a delusion or something. And then she can real boot herself so that she can be real sometimes and not real other times. Maybe that's what it is. Yo, what if I'm right? What if I'm right? What if I'm right, dude? Oh my gosh. Yo. Okay. Everything Aoi-san is saying is a complete and utter lie. You're the liar here. Aoi-san, just get out of here already. Never come near Taku again. Who should I believe? Wh why are you getting so mad over just a random formula? Do you really not know anything? Think about how Einstein authored E equals MC squared. Through simply creating that formula, a future where nuclear weapons are developed was born. Oh, dude, that's the route they're going. The IR2 you created is the same as E equals MC squared. No, it has an even bigger effect on the world. IR2 made silent weapons a reality. Oh, no. Silent weapons? Mind reading, visual projection, and control over the five senses. Wasn't that the patented technology Senna had told me about before? The one that she was investigating? Soon, gigalomaniacs won't be something special. No, they won't even be considered abnormal. Thanks to the device made based on IR2, in the future, anyone will freely be able to use this abhorrent power. Of course, before that can happen, it'll likely be monopolized by a number of monsters who will then brainwash the masses into livestock. Mindless sheep completely unaware of their oppressors. That is too real. Holy frick, that is too real. Bro, that is so real. I gotta, I gotta look up the guy that wrote this. I know it's like one guy. I think he had maybe like a couple helpers at different points, but I think it's mostly written by one guy, if, if I'm not 
maybe it was just completely written by one guy, the the whole uh, science adventure series. I can't remember, but I got to look this dude up. This dude, this dude is a conspiracy theorist in the, in the, to the 10th degree, man, bro. We would get along so well. These games are so real and they came so much earlier than I feel like all these conspiracy theories that people hear about now had ever like come into place. Like maybe they were there back then, but they were so obscure. Now it's like you hear constantly of these types of situations, like the brainwashed masses, you know what I mean? And then you see a game like this and it's like, holy frick, that's so real, dude. It feels so real because of that. Same thing happened with Steins Gate. So much of the stuff that happened in there, I was like, oh my gosh, I could see this actually being real. This is in the, it's, ah, I don't even know how to explain that feeling, but it's like, it's almost like they're breaking the fourth wall. It's really wild. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How would I have known all this? Go on and on about this crap till the end of time. It still wouldn't change that I didn't know anything. Even if Senna was speaking the truth, I never would have intentionally tried to make something so horrifying. Not in a million years. It was just a doodle made by a kid. I hadn't done anything wrong. Wowie zowie. If so, if really so, I am too is... Oh, I am too. Is it a spell like I are too? I am too? Is that, that's, that's like saying I am, the I am. God calls himself I am. Is this saying it's like the second I am, the second God? Oh no! What did we make with this formula, bro? This is freaking wild. This is so crazy. This is really wacky. Okay. Oh my gosh. I are too. It's something that explains the power of Gigalomaniacs all sparkly warkly. Just like that. The things that oldie moldy guy said were all truly true after all these. I mean, he said the most important thing was the boy who created whose eyes are those eyes. And that boy was takami Shan all along. Oh no, Frick. We created the end of the world? Bro, Frick, this sucks. Kozapi spoke in a carefree tone. I would never be able to act as innocent as she could. Just like me, Dimi also showed no signs of answering. Senna, meanwhile, opened her eyes wide and raised her head with a start. She rose to her feet, staggering. Why was her footing so unsteady? Did it have something to do with what Dimi had done to her earlier? Kozue. What did you just say? Upi? Senna drew closer to the puzzled girl, pressing her for answers. Who exactly is this oldie moldy guy? Well, it's the person that taught Kozupi about how precious these swords are. The first person Kozupi talked to when Kozupi came to Tokyo. When Kozupi thinks back on it, he wore an icky outfit that made Kozupi want to pinch her nose, and he was holding a sign with something really weird written on it. The world is ending, or something like that. <laughs> well, why didn't you tell me about this sooner? Yeah, B -b but Kozupi's telling about it the second Kozupi remembered. It's him. I finally found him. Me, Dimi, and Kozupi, the three of us, unable to understand what Senna meant, could only watch with confusion as Senna's blood-curdling demeanor boiled and bubbled. Finally, I can kill that monster. Oh, Frank, man. Has she seen him before? I didn't remember if she saw him.
Oh no, Frick. Oh no, no, no. This is bad, dude. We gotta stop Senna. We gotta stop her. But we also, we probably do need to wake up because I have a feeling once we wake up, we'll get information we didn't have before. And then hopefully Takami will be able to become the hero that he freaking didn't think he could be. You know, he'll come up with another equation to like cancel the other one out or something. I don't know. I love how incredibly sci-fi this is. And yet equally in the same, like equally uh, fantasy and its counterparts. You know what I mean? So it's like we're dealing with like Esper stuff. But all that Esper stuff came about, well, kind of. I mean, they said that they wouldn't be special, so it sounds like they were always there. But, 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 uh, but, but that like Esper stuff can happen with a machine, you know. So it's like sci-fi and fantasy being mixed together. It's really wild. I really like that as a concept. Very cool. There had once been a certain experiment. But it was an experiment she had known nothing of. Oh! Okay, wait a minute. That's not, okay, that's not Demi. So unless Demi looks different than what her actual real self looked like and her delusion form is different, maybe? Uh-oh. Okay. I'm still, I'm still clinging to that for now, but, but this, this kind of throws a wrench in it, but I'm still, I'm, that's my, that's where I'm going with it, that the, the delusion form of her is not, doesn't, like, represent her actual form correctly. She was a perfectly ordinary housewife, and had been blessed with a second child in her womb before turning 40. No, perhaps perfectly ordinary might not have fit her quite so well. Unless the baby, no, the baby can't be it, right? I was going to say maybe the baby's the delusion. I'm trying to think, what was the sacrifice? Because obviously she died, so the mom died. But did she die with the baby then? And if she did, is the baby Demi and that's the delusion? I don't know. Ah, there's too many things that this could be. Okay. After all, her eldest daughter was already old enough to enter high school. A 15-year gap from the second child. Wait, wait, what? What? You mean that? Wait, so Senna's the first one? Wait, I, wait. <laughs> so, is this kid here? Is this? Are they maybe brother and sister? What the frick? I don't understand what is happening, bro. What do you mean? I'm. I just okay. I gotta keep moving forward. Are they actually brother and sister? And she doesn't know. She has to know. And Nanami's not actually his sister, but maybe a delusion? I frig me, man! We've never seen Takumi's parents, and I've said that from the beginning. They never actually show them. Ever. That has to mean something. So, maybe Senna is actually Takumi's older sister, but Takumi is freaking caught in a, in a form of stasis, so he's actually supposed to be, like, or, or maybe she's caught in a, a stasis because, I don't know, I don't know, I freaking, I don't know, but is it really that, is that actually the case? Oh my gosh. She had been slightly worried that her eldest daughter, adolescent that she was, would oppose the pregnancy. However, the exact opposite proved to be true. Her daughter's heart sang when she heard the news. Her husband, an established scientist, often lost himself in his research and faith, and rarely ever came home to his family. But, when he was home, he always did his best to be a good husband and father. Oh, wait, so he... Interesting that they have his research and faith. That usually that's never the case. It's usually always like scientists are like, God doesn't exist. God isn't real. You know, it's like, so it's cool that they're actually having like a combination of those two things together. That's just so you never see that. You know what I mean? What the frick is happening? So while she housed some dissatisfactions, they would never surpass the love she held for her husband. Her second child was delivered without issue. A healthy girl of 2,579 grams. Oh, so it's a girl! No, so maybe this is Senna! Who's the older one, then? What the frick? I, what? You, they're just introducing all this new crap out of nowhere. I, uh, what? 
So is the one in her stomach, is that one Takumi? Or, or is Takumi actually the dad? I don't freak, I'm so, my brain is done for, man. How do I, I can't be wrong if I come up with every theory, okay? I can't be wrong. So by the end, if I come up with every theory and one of them is true, I was right. <laughs> Sticking to one be darned, okay? That's, that's what this game has led me to, okay? But I'm sticking to the fact that Takumi's still the dad. Because I don't understand the rest. So there's three children involved right now. One that's still not born. The one that was born and is a baby. And then the other one that's an adolescent girl, which I'm assuming is Senna. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. She named the child Mana. Mana. Okay. That's not Senna. Oh, actually, I said the baby was Senna, so it can't be Senna if this baby's Mana. So I had a freaking whatever. Soon after, her husband was unfortunately made to transfer far away. Her husband held no capacity to support himself with even the most basic of life skills, forcing her to ask her stable daughter to go with him and tend to her father's needs. Since she was now living alone with the newborn Mana, they then opted to move to an affordable company housing as per her husband's plan. She had initially been living in an apartment within the suburbs, but this made transport inconvenient. The new company house, however, was in the best area in Shibuya, and many of her husband's colleagues, families, lived close by. Her considerate husband claimed that, because of this, there would be nothing to worry about in her times of need, including when she needed help with the baby. Every room in the company house was spacious, and she particularly favored the bedroom. One wall was home to a large mirror, and the opposite wall had an even larger window. From there, she could view the luscious greenery of Yoyogi Park. She then went on to quickly befriend a housewife living close by, and received extraordinary treatment from the company, namely, being provided a housekeeper. She was proud of her husband for holding such an important position within his company, one that allowed her to live in such a luxurious way. And so, her life without worries nor dissatisfaction continued. Two years passed. While Mana had experienced delayed growth, she had grown into a healthy child, all while not contracting any major illnesses. She was a very pampered child. If she did not cradle Mana in her arms, the girl would start crying in a voice so shrill it could shatter even the thickest glass. Regrettably, she had fallen ill about a month prior. A particularly grave symptom was a fierce tinnitus something she suffered from throughout most hours of the day. Fortunately for her, the housekeeper and the housewife next door were more than willing to assist her with taking care of Mana. Regardless of the help she received, she was essentially joined at the hip with Mana, and was never able to part from her even for a moment. Even when going to the bathroom, even when taking a bath, if a thought were even to cross her mind about having the housekeeper cradle the baby for a short time, Mana would detect these intentions and immediately burst into tears. Contrary to what one might surmise, she actually found endearment in how much Mana clung to her. But, due to the inseparability of the two, she continued to live a life where she could never take even a single step out of her own home. Dang. Her lifestyle was entirely supported by the housekeeper and the housewife. For her, meeting the two had become her true saving grace. However, over time, something odd began to happen with the two helpers. I just thought about this too, okay, right? So, this might be a spoiler, so so I'm gonna put like a I'm, I'm gonna put a, a, a timestamp to where to go to in case you don't want a Steins Gate spoiler by any chance. In case you're watching this first and then you're gonna move to Steins Gate, um, so just you know putting that out there real quick in case you want to skip to that. But what if what if the the implication is that Okabe 
was a gigalomaniac and that's why he was able to have such strong reading Steiner. You know what I mean? Because he had such incredibly strong reading Steiner compared to anyone else. You know what I mean? So like, but I mean, we found out that um, everyone has reading Steiner. So if if the case is that everyone has reading Steiner to some degree, does that mean everyone is a gigalomaniac? If these worlds are consistent, maybe Okabe's world is just like a, a slightly different world line than the one that uh, that we're on in, in in Chaos Head. Then, then that would mean that he still could be a gigalomaniac. So, so he's like got the so so everyone is a slight gigalomaniac to some degree. If they all can have reading Steiner, then maybe that's why some of us can have uh, I don't know like we might think we hear the voices of somebody, but really we just call it reading their body language or something, but it's almost like we can read their thoughts or something when you become like really close to someone, let's say. Um, but an actual gigalomaniac can literally hear their, their, their voices, right? Um, I wonder if that's what they were going for. Cause I always wondered, I'm like, it's so weird that, they, that Okabe just has this like random power and nobody else really seems to have it. But it would make sense if we're talking about a world where people have these special powers, right? And it's like this gigalomaniac type of world. And and I mean, I guess according to Senna here, that that didn't happen because of the formula. But the formula is going to make it to where everyone has th those powers. And then gigalomaniacs won't be special anymore. So maybe it's the events of uh, Chaos Head that cause everyone to have a small amount of reading Steiner in Steins Gate, you think? Maybe? We still have a whole nother game to get through. We have, we still have Chaos uh, Child to get through. So freaking, I don't freaking have a clue what that game's gonna bring into the equation. But it, I mean, that's where I'm, that's where I'm at currently. So dang, okay, this is interesting. Very, very interesting. But anyway, I, I wanted to, I wanted to, bring that up as a point because it just made me start thinking about that game and I was like oh that would make sense because I always wondered you know w what the purpose behind that was or like because it seems kind of out of the blue for a game strictly based in fantasy or uh, excuse me in science fiction so anyway all right during a friendly chat in the living room that had occurred a week prior the housewife had spontaneously vomited without warning Paying no heed to the confusion she showed, the housewife then rushed outside. She had not seen her since, leaving her to worry that she had perhaps fallen ill. Why did they fall ill, though? So this mom fell ill, but then also the housewife is falling ill, too. It's gotta be something with whatever the husband was doing, or who I'm assuming was Takami. Concerned, she decided to ask the housekeeper if she could check on her. As the housekeeper left that day, she made her request, concluding with an, I'd love your help tomorrow as well, dear. And yet, when the housekeeper heard these words, she suddenly burst into tears and could only nod again and again as she departed. Well. Baby. The tinnitus that had been tormenting her so became fiercer that night to the point where it felt as if her head itself might split apart. She tried calling an ambulance, but the line refused to connect. Oh, I'm just now hearing the tinnitus. <gasps> Wait, but we heard tinnitus in the beginning of the game! Remember? That ringing? What did that mean? Uh-oh. Wait, I'm trying to connect the dots. We heard that tinnitus. So are we the baby? No, I still think we're the... I still think... Uh, Takami's the husband. I still think that's the, the dad, right? It's gotta be. It's gotta be him. So. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. She then tried going outside to ask the neighboring housewife for help. But even that proved too much for her. Throughout all of this, her daughter had continued to cry incessantly, further agitating her pain. In order to endure this terrible pain... She embraced her beloved Mana, and as she did so, both the tinnitus and the crying abruptly stopped. The pain in her head vanished just as suddenly, almost as if it had never been there to begin with. She then looked down, only to see 
that the child she was holding was now a mummified corpse. Ew! Oh, that was gross. That, that like, actually scared me. It, like, jump-started my heart a little bit. In spite of how heavily it had been crying until that very moment, the body had suddenly become a disecated, I'm not used to that word, rotting mound of flesh. One that gave off the most repulsive stench. And so, before she could even realize it was all an experiment, her mind broke. An experiment? Oh my gosh, so this is the sacrifice, right? There had once been a certain experiment. But it was an experiment that ran different to how he had hypothesized. What? Why the quotation marks? That's gotta be Takami, dude. It looks like him, dude. It's gotta be Takami. He was a scientist at Nozomi Technology, a follower of the Cosmic Church of the Divine Light. Oh, no! It's not, not the Cosmic Church of the Divine Light. That's why Senna hated that. Oh, no. What does that mean? Is that a cult? I didn't know he was a part of that. Oh, no. Frick, that's not good. The man at the center of Nozomi's strictly confidential Project Noah, and the man that had deciphered fun to the 10th power times int to the 40th power equals IR2. He had offered his wife on the verge of childbirth as a test subject for the experiment. While that had been an instruction from the founder that he revered, it had been just as much his own suggestion, all to ensure the success of the experiment. What? Uh... It was christened the Mana Experiment, after the code name given to their second daughter. His eldest daughter of 15 was placed in a cosmic church of the Divine Light Institution, all while he observed his confined wife and infant child for 24 hours a day. <gasps> Wait! What if Senna's this baby called Mana and freaking uh, Ayase is the older daughter? That's why they haven't met yet. Oh no, well they kind of did. They, I mean, she saw her. What if that's the case? So Ayase is the older daughter. Senna's the younger daughter that they called Mana, but her name is actually Senna. And then there's a new baby. Oh no, no, no. It, it, it can't be that connected, right? It can't be. Freaking Ayase doesn't even look like the rest of them. She can't be. It's not possible. It can't be. That can't be the case. I think I'm I think I'm big braining a little too hard now. That can't be the case. His wife had been led to believe that the place she resided in was a company house, but in reality, it was a test site that Nozomi Technology had prepared. A site containing the Noah 2 prototype he was developing. No, but she's even- I just realized she's wearing the same type of helmet that freaking Ayase was wearing! That has to be the older daughter! Oh no! Everything's so connected, dude! This sucks! Mind reading, visual projection, and control over the five senses. In order to research the effects of such practices, he locked his wife and daughter, Mana, in the site as test subjects. See, the fact that they're using this pronoun game of he and she and they're putting quotation marks on it, that's got to be Takumi and they just don't want to tell me. But it also has this very strange Adam and Eve quality to it, you know what I mean? Adam trying to play God, you know? That Adam created God, you know, in a way. And that his wife Eve is this test subject created from his own womb, so to speak. But but it's like her womb is having this kid that freaking... Do you kind of see the, the crossover there? I feel like there's a crossover there. Maybe I'm looking a little too hard into it, but it very much feels like it. Not much was known about the effects of electromagnetic radiation on the human body. So he very much intended to halt the experiment immediately if his wife or child showed any strange abnormalities. The experiment was then met with an unfortunate accident soon after it began. Mana passed away at one month of age. Her cause of death 
unknown. What? So she's, oh no, ah, every new information makes, it changes my theory and makes no sense anymore. Oh, frick. So, that can't be Senna. I don't, I don't know, I don't know anything anymore. Man, I need a sip of my water. It was an accident nobody could have prevented. He was overcome with sorrow and attempted to bring the experiment to a close. And yet, such a thing was not permitted to him. Do you not find it rather intriguing? Those were the words of his employer. His employer was referring to the bizarre sight visible within the experiment. His wife did not seem to recognize Mana's death as real, and instead treated her remains as if they were still her child. In her eyes, Mana had never died. But in truth, these things were all a simple projection, a reality only she was privy to. So, but the tinnitus was, was what let her know, right? The tinnitus came about, and then, and then after that, like, quit for a second, then she saw reality as it was, the mummified corpse, right? So, when we heard tinnitus was when we saw the what he's calling the delusion of Dini doing the crucifixion murder, right? That was the time that we heard the tinnitus, and then we heard it a second time when we were walking home by ourselves, but I can't remember what what happened in that second encounter. Or maybe that was the second encounter, and there was a first encounter, I'm not remembering. Anyway, but I definitely remember it happened for that. So, that's gotta mean something. The tinnitus has to mean something in correlation to delusion, then. But we've only heard it in the beginning. We haven't heard it since. So does that mean that we entered the delusion when the tinnitus first hit? And this whole game up to this point since then has been a delusion? I don't know. I don't. I just don't know. This was an effect of the Noah 2 prototype. And in a certain sense, the situation proved an optimal opportunity to test its capabilities. Consequently, he had his wishes disregarded. That's really screwed, though. Eventually, even he came to think that continuing the experiment would be best, for his wife's sake. So he was saying that, that, that she, so she wasn't a willing participant, she just didn't know, but, or, or was she? Either way, then he's like, well, this is still better for her to know that her child is alive than dead, I guess, in his mind? And then also trying to do something for the future of humanity, I guess, in his mind. Oh, boy. Looking upon the one-way mirror, his wife would embrace the corpse of their child and lived her every day in blissful happiness. She would gaze through the window toward the greenery of Yoyogi Park, but in reality, the window was a mere wallpaper and the scenery a projection. And yet... She simply smiled at the view, all while gently tending to her child as she cooed. Staff belonging to the research team would take care of his wife, with one playing the role of a neighboring housewife and the other a housekeeper. As long as the experiment continued, her mind would never break. As such, he told himself that this was all for his wife's sake. Though in truth, Perhaps his mind had broken far before his wife's ever could. At some point in time, his goal had changed from completing Noah 2 to forcing his wife to continue living an endless dream. After continuing the experiment for two years, his employer suddenly announced an end to the project. We have obtained significant data. Noah 2 will soon begin full operation, meaning there is little point in continuing this experiment further. He vehemently opposed this, his desperation evident, and yet, this passion had him branded a traitor, and he was subsequently removed from the project. Frick. As a gesture of kindness, 
he was permitted to be present at the test site on the final day of the experiment, albeit within restraints. And with him, his daughter, of whom he had not seen across those full two years, was forced to be present. A look of bewilderment rose to her face when she noticed him. That's why he was homeless. Wait, that is Senna! Oh no! Or at least it looks like her. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Okay, never mind. Ayase was not the older one, so... Um... Okay, so that one's Senna. So then, baby dead. And then, new baby in womb, right? I think, because... Did I hear there were three, or did I mis mis mistake, uh... Did I mistake the, the newborn as the one in the womb in the beginning? Maybe I might have. I'll probably catch that in editing and put it up, but okay. So this is Senna, though. Dad? What's going on? What did you do to Mom? What the... What is Mom hugging? He was unable to answer. His guilt over what he had done prevented him from looking his daughter in the eye. Meanwhile, the start of a ghastly ritual was drawing near. The housewife had long since become unable to endure Mana's rotting stench, and the housekeeper had left the test site in tears in response to his wife's words. Oh, that's why she threw up. Oh, frick. Then, the equipment was stopped. The dream ended. And his wife broke. In her eyes, what was once her child had suddenly transformed into a mummy, a sight that brought her to scratch at her scalp, tear out her hair, dig her fingernails into the flesh of her face, and then begin to ravenously devour the desiccated body of her own child. Oh my gosh. Oh, frick. No wonder Senna hates him so much. Oh, no. Through every tear of flesh, she continued to laugh maniacally, bang her head against the wall, before eventually she took a kitchen knife, drove the blade into her own eyes, and died right where she stood. Why did they have freaking Senna come and look at that, though? Mom? Mom! The daughter cried and screamed as she watched her mother's horrific end from beyond the one-way mirror. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Mom! Mom! No! His daughter was then taken away by two researchers, with one taking hold of each arm. He was not even granted the opportunity to pursue his only remaining relative. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Is that why Nishijo says I'm sorry all the time? He always says I'm sorry, right? And then he says, don't look at me. Is that what he's gonna say? Is he gonna say, don't look at me? Is that what he's gonna say? Wait. He blamed himself for everything, believing he had reaped what he himself had sowed. Regardless of his reasons, when he had resolved to continue the experiment two years ago, it had been obvious how things would end. Mere days after bearing witness to his wife's death, he vanished. And now, nary a soul knew of his current whereabouts. I'm surprised they wouldn't have kept uh, tabs on him, you know, like to let, to let a guy with that kind of knowledge go. I can't believe they would freaking just let him go and not keep tabs on him, you know, and, or find him and kill him or something so that he can't do anything about it, about their plan.
after everything had settled, Senna had gone on to interrogate Kozapi about something with bloodshot eyes. And then after doing that for a bit, she ran off somewhere on her own. Kozapi had chased after her, but I, meanwhile, had just been staying put, still incredibly confused as to why Senna had become so obsessive all of a sudden. And now, I was trudging to Shimo Kitazawa. My parents' house was only a short distance away. Walking from my base to it took less than half an hour. Could Nanami be there? Wait, what happened to Demi? What happened to the whole scenario? What? How do you just get up and walk away? I... okay. Never mind. Stuff is starting to make more sense for why he acts so irrational now, because if he's actually amnesiac-like, and he's in a dream state type of a thing, then, then things can suddenly make sense and then not make sense back and forth over and over, right? Oh, no. Though not as busy as Shibuya itself, the roads of Shimo Kitazawa were fairly crowded. I was still being hit by the aftermath of that Esper debacle. Namely, some passers-by looked at me with mocking sneers, while others even took pictures of me on their phones. I wonder if he has this concept of this DQN thing where everyone just is mocking him, um, because he perceives himself his old his older self perceived himself as this like monster and like that this thing that's like loathsome to everyone else and see so then so then shogun wanted to wake him up to that to show him the reality so that he could hopefully fix the situation or something right but but demi I guess is wanting to keep him in this dream state where he's locked in this box all by himself and, and, and he only plays a video game and no one thinks poorly of him in this world, you know, Sena, Senatan, or, or Seiratan, I mean, doesn't think um, any anything ill of him or anything like that, right? So he constantly can just daydream about people who like him and that he likes himself even though he kind of hates himself but he still can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wonder if there's something to that. Anyway. Overwhelmed by embarrassment and humiliation, I hurried along the road to home. I'm sorry. Demi's eyes were pointed to the ground as she said that. She was walking a bit behind me, and in the time we'd spent moving along, she'd already repeated those words over ten times. Okay, so she still is with us. But like... How is he just casually going about his day, then? I'm sorry for not saying anything. <laughs> no matter how much she apologized, I had no way of answering. I didn't know anything about Dimi. Nothing had changed ever since we'd first met. And yet, she supported me. She stayed by my side. But at the end of the day, there was still so much I didn't know about her. Even so, I'd always brushed that issue out of my mind. Perhaps it was because something in me knew that she wouldn't stay with me if I knew the truth. Huh. And that terrified me. W why do you stay by my side at all? I worked up the courage and asked her what was on my mind. I asked her the reason why she would stay with a guy like me. Was it because she was trying to lure me into a trap the entire time, just like Yua had? And yet, despite my suspicions, the answer she gave was nothing of the sort. I didn't want you to awaken. I wanted you to live a normal life. What? Okay, so... So, okay. So, she's not... Okay, I... Okay. Nothing... Nothing's adding up with any of my theories right now. Nothing fully makes sense to me. I just... I can't. I can't. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a broken record on repeat at this point. I... I, I, I don't know. Didn't want me to awaken? Like... As a gigalomaniac? 
Demi knew more about me than I did. Who, who the heck uh, are you exactly? I... Demi hesitated a little. I'm someone who really does think of you as a friend, Taku. What does that mean? And I want it to stay that way. In other words, she was telling me to stop pushing. So I, I just, I don't think she is the delusion of, of what I was assuming was Takami's wife in the future. So that doesn't make sense anymore. So I don't, I, I still think she's not real though. I still think she's a delusion. I, I don't think she's a real person. She's, she's maybe a delusion made reality, but she's not actual reality. So that's, that's where I'm, I'm still sticking with that. Miss Me Couldn't definitely ain't real, as far as I'm concerned, so... Anyway. But there was no way I could stop there. Am I a gigalomaniac? You are. Alright, well, we, I mean, we kind of already knew that, so... But you also aren't. Uh, okay, well, we didn't know that, so never mind. Which was it? Was she trying to dodge the question? Did, did you know uh, about IR2? I'd only heard about it. She didn't say from who. It is what Senna said. True? No. It's all lies. Lies? Telling me it was all lies. Was a lie in and of itself. I could just tell from looking at her. You. I was about to ask more, but I held my tongue. Are you my enemy? Or are you my friend? Depending on the answer, I might not have been able to stay with Demi, so I didn't ask. If I pretended that nothing had happened, I could keep on deceiving myself just as I had been up until now. That way might be easier for me. Happier, even. It's not true, ma'am. Okay. That was what I was going to do. I was going to keep being ignorant and keep living a lie. A lie told by Demi. Demi had saved my rear so many times already. So there was no way any harm would come to me if I did that. I deserved to live a normal life, just like she'd said. Th thank you. I averted my eyes from her and swapped out my question for a few words of gratitude. Yeah, he's, he's, he's buying the lie, man. He's trading truth for the lie, and that just that's never good, man. Truth sets you free, buddy. Oh, man. But how poetic, right? Like, how many people want to believe the lie because the lie seems more comfortable? You know what I mean? It's very poetic in what it's trying to do. I really appreciate that. That's kind of what gives it this somber feeling. It's like, even though I know what I'm saying is, is correct, it's like, but I get it, you know? I get that you wouldn't want to understand the truth because once you understand the truth, you can't go back. You know what I mean? Once your eyes have been opened, it's like uh, Frederick Nietzsche would say or whatever. I don't know the exact quote, but he's like, once I, once you gazed into the abyss and the abyss gazed back, it's like you can't go back from that, you know? I think he's, he was the one that said something along that line. Um, but there's also like Dostoevsky or however you say his name, where it's like, it's better to be, uh, to, it's, it's better to know and be in utter despair than to live in a fool's paradise. You know what I mean? It's like, um... I don't think I said the name right, but I'll throw it up on screen what the quote is. Um, it's one of my favorite quotes, though, because it's very, very true. You know, it's like being blissfully ignorant isn't really a good thing, but it feels like a good thing. You know what I mean? The problem is, is once you gain wisdom on something, you can't go back. So if you regret the decision, you can't unknow what you know now. You know what I mean? In most cases. So it's like, but at the same time, even though knowing the truth could cause you to be in utter despair. 
knowing the truth is oftentimes, not oftentimes, it is better than knowing the lie, than, than believing the lie. You know what I mean? So it's like, it, it's it's better to know and then just live this life always being like, you know, wow, everything really sucks or whatever, than pretending things aren't. You know what I mean? So, uh, very cool, very interesting, the route this is taking. For p protecting me. Taku. I couldn't think of anything else to say. So I just continued walking toward my parents' house in silence. My eyes were eventually met with a familiar alleyway. It was a quiet, secluded residential area. Every now and then, I could hear the faint sound of a train in the distance. I'd known this specific chunk of scenery ever since I was a little kid. This was where I'd grown up. I'd walked to both elementary school and middle school using this alleyway. If I headed through the narrow alleyway in front of me, my house would be right there. I was scared of seeing Nanami again. But I had to know for certain whether her arm was still there. I stopped and took a deep breath to calm myself. And then, right when I was about to start walking again, Wait. Huh? I turned around to see Themi on the verge of tears. Do you have to go? No matter what? Please. Don't go. If you do, you'll never have a normal life. I don't want that for you. What was that supposed to... How about we just go back? Back to your container house. I'll stay with you as long as you want, Taku. We can go to school together. Have silly little conversations with Daichin together. Go to a soba stand or... A CD shop on the way home together. This is interesting. See, she's talking just like Sataton. And they look similar too. That's what I, I've said that before. Is there a connection there? Because Sataton says the same things. So let's just go home and you can just indulge in self-pleasure with me and all this bullcrap, but it's not real. Whereas Shogun's, like, scary to him, but it's like, I'm trying to show you what's real life, but you have to figure it out on your own. I can't, I can't convince you. You have to convince yourself. So if I, I can put you in the situation, I can lead you to the water, but I can't make you drink it, right? So it's like, he's like, I need you to do what I'm telling you so you wake up from this and fix everything, right? Because I think he said that forever ago. I need you to wake up uh, so that things don't go bad or whatever he said. I forget at the time, but... So, so maybe Dimi and Shogun are actually somewhat in contention, but they had that conversation where they were talking pleasantly together. It doesn't make sense. I don't, I don't get it. It doesn't matter what. Let's just forget this and keep doing what we've been doing. Uh, I have to see Nanami. She won't be there. I'm sure of it. Because she's not real. Oh no. Oh no. Why was she so sure? Or was it just another lie? Would something bad happen to me if I went home? I... I don't want you to be sad, Taku. So you say... Can you just stop being cryptic for once? I'd had enough. She was telling me to stay ignorant forever. Well, you kind of wanted to for a second there, buddy. That's what you were just saying, right? You're like, I don't want to know because then, you know, she won't be able to stay with me. So maybe he's coming to the realization. I couldn't go on like this, pretending like I knew nothing. 
Of course I couldn't. There you go. Each and every person I knew just kept hitting me with nonstop cryptic nonsense. It never ended. I really did want to stay ignorant. I really did. If there's a reason I can't go home, th then just say it. I I'm so freaking sick of all this half-baked cryptic bullcrap. Sick of it? Did I have any right to say that? Wasn't I the one who always half-baked everything? Who never said what I really meant? Wasn't I the one who always ran away from everything? Yeah, I was. All the more reason to just keep doing that. From now until forever. It was time to go home. Dimi was right. I didn't need to see Nanami at all. Oh gosh, dang it, he keeps convincing himself to buy the lie. Oh man. If I was planning on checking whether she had her right hand or not, then what the heck would I do if she didn't? Wouldn't that be all my fault? Nanami would hate me. Resent me. All it would have done was solidify that I was a pathetic loser that couldn't even save his own little sister. If I left everything up in the air like it was now, I wouldn't have to be loaded with guilt. See, it's again, it's the blame game again. This is like, this is so very human. People do this all the time, man, where they have to blame someone else, you know? It's like, I can't take responsibility. That'd feel bad, you know? I can't be the cause of my own problems, so it's some other person's problem. It's someone else that did this to me. My parents, you know, my my uncle, my freaking, you know, brother or sister, my school, my government, my something. Something's the reason that I am the way I am now, rather than taking responsibility for one's actions, you know? God did this to me, right? You know, and the funny thing is, uh, people always blame God for everything, you know, and I think it's because people naturally believe because we're told that God is more powerful than Satan. So he controls everything, right? And in their mind, they're like, you know, he has power over everything at least. So why can't he just make the bad be like, why can't he just conquer the bad? Why does the bad get to continue doing stuff, right? Nobody puts the blame on Satan who vehemently is after us. He has no goodwill for us. He's constantly trying to destroy us. He, he's only capable of stealing, killing, and destroying us. In any way, shape, and form you can think of those three concepts, he tries to do that to you. He steals your peace, he tries to kill you, and he tries to destroy your life and your eternal, eternal place, you know? And so... We never blame him, though. We always blame God because it's like you could have done something and you didn't. That's what always people think, right? But they never blame Satan. They never say, I can't believe Satan did this to me. You just never hear it. You know what I mean? And that in and of itself is like a delusion that, that Satan has gotten people to buy. You know what I mean? It's really crazy. So, oh, man, there's just so much like po poeticism in this. And I'm really liking how this is tying together. I'm really, I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat right now. All right. So, that was what I'd do. It was the optimal choice. Don't look at anything. No matter how many mysteries come your way, ignore them. Shut yourself away from the world. You're a real troublemaker, you know. I swear, you couldn't do a thing if I wasn't around, big bro. I can't do it. Nanami's cheerful voice popped into my head. I just can't do it. If I ran away now, I wouldn't be able to face Nanami for the rest of my life. I wouldn't be able to go back home for the rest of my life. Taku? I clenched my fists. 
and stepped forward into the narrow alleyway that led to my parents' house. I was less than 50 meters away now. At first, I just speed walked. Then I started running. Running toward the home I'd been raised in. Atta boy, atta boy. Man, he really has been struggling with just wanting to live the lie. He just wants to buy the lies so bad. Oh, man, finally waking up though. 30 meters to go. 20 meters. 10 meters. Zero meters. <laughs> and when I looked, the house I knew. Oh no! Oh, it's not gonna be there! Huh? Was gone. Oh no! No! <laughs> Yup, it's not real. It's not, none of it's real. Oh no. Oh no. That sucks. What? <laughs> the name on the door plate was wrong. It wasn't Nishijo. In fact, the entire shape of the house was wrong. It was far newer and nicer than the home I'd lived in. I looked around. I wondered if I'd mistaken one of the neighboring houses for mine. But I hadn't. Actually, none of the surrounding scenery lined up with my memories. I considered that maybe I'd gotten lost or, or taken the wrong alley. But there was no way that could have happened. I'd recognized the entire route until now. I knew for a fact I remembered the route. But my home wasn't at the end of it. After taking the path from my memories, the scenery that should have been there hadn't appeared, and a completely unfamiliar one had instead. So here's the thing, right? So, so Demi wanted to erase Takami, but also said that she wanted him to keep living the lie. So... Did she want to erase him for his benefit so that he wouldn't have to keep suffering? Or did she actually have malicious intent to want to erase him? I, I don't actually know. I just don't know. And I still don't know who Dimi is. I still think she's a delusion. So I, I have no idea. I don't know. Jamais vu. What should have been a familiar place felt like I was setting foot in it for the first time. It's Jamais vu. No, it's not. Dimi stood right behind me. She had denied my words immediately. In this world... Oh, no. You don't have a home to go back to, Taku. Taku. 